Good morning, and welcome to St. Juliana Falconeri Parish. We especially welcome all visitors to our parish and those joining us online. Today, Father Mike will lead us in this celebration of God's love for us on this 12th Sunday in Ordinary Time. You will find the readings on page 961 of the Journey Song Hymnal. Please take a moment to stand and greet those around you. Together, let us join in singing our gathering song. Um, in this place, it is number 770, 770. <laughs> Gathered together with God here in this place, together we praise his name, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God his Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We've gathered together to celebrate the mystery of God's love for us. Let us remember the way that we've not feared to go out and proclaim his love, the forgiveness of sins, and the promise of resurrection, and give thanks. The times we've held back, we ask courage. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Oh. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side, denounce, let us denounce him. All those who are my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble they will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe the mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance that you take on them. For to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise to the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. sake I bear insult and shame covers my face 
I have become an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my mother's children. Because zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who bless me, you fall upon me. I pray to you, O Lord, for the time of your favor, O God. In your great kindness, answer me with your constant help. Answer me, O Lord, for bounteous is your kindness. In your great mercy, turn towards me. ones and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in bonds he spurns not. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, the seas and whatever moves in them. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man, sin entered the world, and through sin, death. And thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin, under the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of the one the many died, How much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? The word of the law, a word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Every now and again I shout, Hey Alexa, play The Gambler by Kenny Rogers. And she does. And the words, I think, are somewhat virtuous. We all need to know when to hold them and when to fold them, when to walk and when to run. There is virtue in that. In teaching virtue, the great philosopher Aristotle created the notion of the golden mean the golden mean is on a continuum, excess on one side and deficiency on the other. And the golden mean, the virtue, is the part in between. And so courage is the virtue between the excess of foolhardiness and the deficiency of cowardness. Some fear is good, of course, like when there's a bear prowling around your campsite, searching at your picnic basket. And I suppose foolhardiness could be the excess of courage that would cost maybe an adventurer his life. Real fear of God, we're told, is the beginning of all wisdom. This fear acknowledges for each of us God's superior divine power and our own limited human power. And this fear of God, this wisdom, focuses human fear and puts the believer on straight street, the very way to salvation. Don't fear the one, we're told, who can save your soul. Fear the one who can take your spirit from you. When you want to go where angels fear to trod, back off. Don't be foolhardy. Have courage. The type of courage that Jesus speaks of is rooted in God's ultimate love for each of us. That love is the value of your life. What is your life worth? Certainly more than two or a bunch of sparrows, right? Sparrows certainly can't be worth much. They're simply not of value. But you've been purchased, we've all been purchased, the community has been purchased at the cost of the life of our Savior. The world might see your worth by your portfolio, whether or not you make it into Fortune magazine. But strange, you're only worth what you're going to leave behind. I'm always reminded the way that my mom spent my inheritance, usually on two dogs, long-haired dachshunds. Thank God I loved them, otherwise I would have choked them long ago. The father counts his children's worth at the cost of his son's life. He suffered so that we won't have to suffer the cost of sin. His suffering was complete. One person died and suffered for all. Strangely enough, the very fear of suffering is the cause of the worst of all sufferings. In a wonderful book, the psychologist Vicar Frankel writes in 
men's search for meaning, that he himself survived the Nazi death camps, and he tells us that each prisoner was always responsible for his or her attitude in the face of the diversity of those prisons, those camps. Here lies a chance, Frankel tells us, for a person to either make use of or to forego the opportunities of attaining moral virtues, even in the most difficult of situations that are put before him. And this decides whether he is worthy of his sufferings or not. If you've worked or been in hospitals, you would have seen the diverse radical difference in attitudes of patients. Some react to unmerited suffering with a lot of anger. Some are bitter, others whine. Yet there are those gallant few who intimidate everyone by the resolve of their resilience to live and survive. And that's the advice offered by Jesus. He simply says, don't let them intimidate you. Don't fear those who deprive the body of life. Fear those who destroy the soul. The fiends who ran the, ran the camps could denigrate the, in, the inmates' bodies, but they couldn't touch their souls as long as the inmates refused to surrender. That's courage. Do you find that in, insight intimidating, especially when you're the victim of your own limitations? When your overbearing moods, your own unguarded s moods, s cause you to surrender to corrosive self-pity? Or am I the only one who really enjoys playing Hamlet, posturing to an audience of one over my own heroic anguish? Something both sane and redeemed in me keeps whispering, Oh, Hamlet, for God's sake, when are you going to get over it? Doesn't this self-loathing get to be a bit boring even for yourself? Strange, isn't it? At those moments, any reasonable person can only think, if you want to find yourself, lose yourself. Stride confidently and act with faith. Shed self-pity the same way that a butterfly shucks the cocoon. If you want to be happy, root out resentments and grudges, all that slavery to what you guess are other person's opinions of you. If you want to stop drowning, let go of the anchor. Why does that take so much courage? Recall St. Paul's Gospel, in all the world you will have trouble, but son, take courage. I've conquered the world. Yes, indeed, he did that for us. And that's good news that we should shout from all the housetops. God bless. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. 
I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. To the Lord, whose kindness is bountiful, we pray. That all church leaders will serve in holiness and integrity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the love of justice, that all rulers seek the common good, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the love of life, that we will continue to uphold the value of all humanity from the moment of conception to natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the love of God, may we have the courage to proclaim the gospel to all by the witness of our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they will rest in God's kingdom. For all who are ill, that God's hand will heal them. For everyone for whom we have promised to pray, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of the masses this Sunday, for the St. Juliana Parish and Catholic Grammar School, for the Father's Day Novena, for the repose of the souls of George Fontes and Christopher Gomez. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all kindness, your love conquers all things. Send the balm of peace upon the earth that we may live in safety, joy, courage, and dignity. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. Please join in singing our offertory song, Be Not Afraid, number 673. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see. If you pass through raging waters in the sea, you shall not drown. If you walk amid the burning flames, you shall not be harmed. If you stand before the power of hell and death is at your side,
Thank you. Our altar table is ready now. I pray that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable to God, the Almighty and loving Father. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered us together to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made by the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might, to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest as the church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your holy name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith is bread and drink this cup. Death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer to you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect. 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saints Juliana and Peregrine and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, his brother bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you today. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and using the words that Jesus taught us, together we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace and God bless, Tom. Peace, kids. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the table of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those not gathered with us today, 
we offer this spiritual act of communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please join in singing our communion hymn, One Bread, One Body, number 793, 793.
please join in singing our Salve Regina number 485, 485. Mate misericordiae, vita dulcero, et spes nostra salve. A te clamamus, exules filii eve, a te suspiramus, gementes et plentes, Today, in fact, right now, our youth ministry is participating in a Eucharistic pilgrimage, a walk from St. Mary's Parish in Fullerton to here. This teen-led walk will be part of a collective effort following the Bishop's call for National Eucharistic Revival. Please pray for our youth and those who will be participating. Come and celebrate the 4th of July with Mass for our country. Mass with choir will be celebrated at 9 a.m. on July 4th. Pray for us. Pray for us as a nation. July 4th at 9 a.m. Mass with choir. A special second collection will be taken next weekend for the Servite missions in South Africa. We thank you for your ongoing generosity. Welcome back, Father Mike. Good to have you back with us. The gospel last week, where Jesus gave the apostles the authority to go out and proclaim the good news, was followed by another message today. Don't be afraid to do that. And that authority is there for all of us, as we talked about. And we do have fears. Sometimes we are afraid of being rejected, or we're afraid that we're too old or too young, or we don't know how to share our faith and go out and proclaim the good news. So we have a workshop for you this Thursday. Don't be afraid to lose a couple hours of your free time. Come. We have the people from St. Paul Street Evangelization. They're coming all the way from Michigan just for our parish. And there'll be hundreds of people going through this across the diocese this week. So we'd like St. Juliana to be a center of evangelization. They're going to teach us how to do it, to not be afraid to go out and share the goodness that we are experiencing here. So this Thursday, 6.30 p.m. in the Paris Center, you can find more information in the bulletin, you can find more inf information in the vestibule, or look online. So thank you, hope you will come, just a couple hours. Do not be afraid, thank you. I am grateful for all of you who prayed for me as I had an infection. Maybe I should update you a little bit. I, a while back, my PSA blood count was kind of high, and so my doctor sent me to a urologist. The urologist sent me to have an MRI, and then back to the urologist, who sent me to have a um, intrusive or invasive uh, MRI a biopsy of my prostate. And so that's how I got the infection at St. Jude Hospital um, last Tuesday. I was having fevers and chills, and I thought this is not good, so I went to the ER. 
hoping that I could get some drugs to get on an airplane to go to Paris, which I didn't do. Instead, I was admitted to the hospital for three days. Hospitals are no place to go if you're sick, I got news for you, <laughs> um, even St. Jude's. And so I've, I've had um, antibiotic drip and there's a port in my arm. Uh, thank God Father Rayfield and, and uh, Franco give me injections every day. Today's the last of them, praise God. So I missed the trip and, and that's fine, I'm getting healthy. I don't know what the next steps are. I'm waiting for my surrogate sister, Jennifer, to get home from Paris and uh, together we'll sort out what I'm going to do with my uh, uh, health. I've been healthy for 68 years and I'm gonna stay healthy for another while because you're gonna be praying for me and I'm gonna be praying to St. Peregrine and together we're all friends. I wanna thank you for your um, prayers. Thank you for your food and your chocolate and everything else you sent my way. Frankly, you're the best uh, parish that the, in, in the diocese for me. Thank you very much for care. I'll keep you updated into whatever is going to happen to me. I'm not going far. I'm sure God doesn't want me and the other one's not ready. So um, <laughs> thank you very much. I'd like also, since we're thinking, you know, choirs usually end um, a long time ago, their, their weekly service to the parish. Ours continues, and I, I'm most grateful to our parish. I think we all are. Thank you very much, Todd. <laughs> If you could tolerate just a, a little corny joke, I don't know that I should be telling this, but, but I don't know why not. So Jennifer's dad, uh, my surrogate father, was an orthopedic surgeon and a very good diagnostician at that. But he didn't like when people just sort of knocked at the door or anybody came and, and said, doctor, can you tell me what's wrong? Jennifer's first husband was um, a healthy and, and sizable man, and he had um, some problem on his, on his hand. Foster always started with the most dire of, uh, of consequences and then went to the easiest one. And so uh, the next thing we see is Jack comes downstairs and he's in kind of fetal position on the bed crying. I said, what's wrong? And he says, he's from Texas. What's wrong? He says, I got the big C. He told me that I'm a dead SOB. Well, what else did he tell you? Well, I need to put um, antibiotic cream or it could even be a mosquito bite, you know, um, so who knows? <laughs> Thank you for giggling. I, I laugh at that every time I think of it. Let us stand and pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our final hymn, Rain Down, number 627, 627.